So then, of course, the second one was David Grush, who said that he had spoken to people in the crash retrieval programs and spoken to people into the reverse engineering programs. But that was his uh, admission. And finally was David Fravor, who was an ex-U.S. Navy commander. He's the one who was present during the Tic Tac recording. Yeah, he's also yeah. Um, a pilot. Yeah, he was one of the first witnesses to speak out back in 2017. Yeah. He also mentioned that this craft had jamming abilities, had ability yes. to jam their signals. For me, I don't really like to get into theories. From what I know is that, yes, we have found ships and... Yes, we have found bodies in those ships. And yes, they have been trying to reverse engineering them. That's all I can say for sure. There's so many theories that people build on from there, but I don't go into that. I just go into, you know, these are the ones I know. And, uh, you know, maybe more will come out in the future. But the important thing is that they have lied. They yeah. have covered this thing up. That's what I'm talking about. So there's three things they have lied about, which hopefully they're going to admit soon. One, they lied about the Apollo missions. Two, they lied and covered up the fact that they have alien crafts. And the third thing is that they lied about this free energy technology. Now, this is where I have a lot of stories which I need to tell. Let me just jump into that. A lot of people talk about the suppression of free energy going back to Nikola Tesla and the Warden Cliff Tower. He was planning on a wireless global network where people could not have to plug in to the grid. And JP Morgan was like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> mm, I can't put so, a meter on it. I don't want it, he said. Right. But you see, I don't know if that is necessarily free energy or not, because he could just be using water turbines. The key point is generation. What's the, what's the generation right. system, not the power transmission system? This is why when right. people say uh, hydrogen, your hydrogen fuel is free energy, it's not because it's simply an, an, an energy transmission or energy delivery system. The key point is what kind of generator does it use? When it comes to the suppression of free energy, this began in the year 1947. Now, what happened was there was an experiment called the LAMB shift, L-A-M-B-S-H-I-F-T, LAMB shift. Now, I have been <coughs> studying this thing for a long time. The LAMB shift was just the beginning of it. What they did was that they were able to produce hydrogen with less energy than what is normally requires to produce hydrogen. And if you can produce hydrogen with less energy and convert it back to electricity, then you get more energy out than in. So this was discovered in 1947. And for so many years I've been following this, really since 2000, what is this lamb shift? And all that was available was the journal entry. This lamb guy made a journal entry. And if you look at the journal entry, it said this article is not available to the public. This was been hidden ever since 1947, that they were able to get more energy out than in from this hydrogen experiment. And that was just the beginning of it. But the interesting thing now is now if you go to Wikipedia and you type lamb shift, they've released it. Finally, after so many years, you know, I've been trying to find out this, what is this lamb shift ever since 2000. It's been kept quiet for as long as Roswell and now it's... It suddenly appeared. I, I mean, um, I don't know if you ever right. watched Alien Scientist on uh, YouTube. He's uh, Jeremy Reese, his name is. He's, he's got a YouTube channel called Alien Scientist because uh, he mentions this. Do you believe that that's a part of something more systemic? That they've released this lamb shift thing. Well, see, this is what I'm talking about. There's three confessions coming out. One is that we fake the Apollo missions. Two is that we've been hiding these UFOs. 
And three is that we've been hiding these free energy technologies. Oh, wow. You see, if you go to Wikipedia and you type lamb shift, it says that the reason there's an excess of energy is because of fluctuations in the vacuum energy field. It says vacuum energy fluctuations. Mm. This is the technical name they're giving to why is it possible to get more energy and out than in is because yeah. vacuum energy fluctuations. This is the official language now. And the reason why that they released the lamb shift information is because the tokamak is about to be released. What do you mean it's about to be um, made to work properly? Right. Yeah, the nuclear, the hot nuclear fusion system, like with ITER, the, the uh, Cullum Laboratories, things like that. Right. Let me just give a quick history of that, since I don't think we did that last time. So the first tokamak, the concept, was created in 1958 in Russia. In 1958, they created this idea of this tokamak, and they had written the physics behind it. And then in 1965... The Europeans poo-pooed on it. There's no free energy that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So it was poo-pooed in 1965. But then in 1968, the British actually sent a team of scientists to Russia to look at their tokamak progress. And then they said, well, this can't be ignored. There's too much going on there now. This can't be ignored. In 1968... They stopped poo-pooing on it. And then in 1974, many countries all over the whole world started trying to replicate the tokamak. And now this is interesting. is because 1974 is the same year where Stephen Hawkins released his book, which talked about Hawkins' radiation. Now, th this ties in to the lamb shift. If you go back to Wikipedia and the lamb shift article, it also mentions Hawkins radiation because Hawkins radiation is another over unity. It's, it means that energy can be created. The second law of thermodynamics is energy cannot be created or destroyed, but energy can be created. And Stephen Hawkins predicted that in 1974, the same year that the global tokamak construction started. Since then, Stephen Hawkins changed his tune and he changed his theory on Hawkins radiation. Now, when did that happen? So to finish up this subject on the tokamak, last year in 2022, China was able to maintain the plasma field for 17 seconds. It was the, oh, the, the world's record of maintaining the plasma field. So then after that, China said, we are going to be ready in 2025. And that's the same date as the French one you just mentioned, the French Eater. tokamak. ITER is also predicting that they'll be ready in 2025. So this is going to be a really breakthrough thing because once they announce to the world that we have done it, our tokamak is working, then it's like, wait a minute, how does the tokamak work? A tokamak is creating more energy out than in? I thought that wasn't possible. Mm. You know, ever since 1947, you've been telling us it's not possible to get more energy out than in. This is the third confession that they've been lying about. You can't get more energy out than in. It is. I mean, ITER is like, they have, I mean, ITER is a huge thing. It's like a gigantic fusion experiment. And it's basically a large version of the MAST experiment, which is just down the road here at Cullum, near where I live. But it's, it's said to be the most efficient tokamak ever built. If it can maintain a stable plasma like indefinitely, then you can easily just hit, rig up a heat exchanger to it. And Bob's your uncle. You just need a dynamo and you've got working power. Right. But it is, it is technically over unity, I think, because... Right. The amount of energy you put in to the magnets to maintain the plasma field is less than the amount of energy you get out in the heat mm. conversion. More energy out than in is definitely... It's, nu it's nuclear fusion, yeah. It's, it's nuclear fusion, which technically is 
is over unity because you can you basically get the energy from the from the uh, nucleus of the atom itself as with fission but it's far more fi it's far more powerful and efficient than nuclear fission which is a conventional nuclear right. power system it's right. also safer right. it doesn't doesn't give right. off deadly radiation the way uh, fission does i mentioned that the stephen hawkins he had to change his theory about hawkins radiation hawkins radiation also predicted more energy out than in so there's another subject which I want to mention here, which is tied into that, is called the EM drive. If you just go to Wikipedia and you type EM drive, it's called the impossible drive. The M drive, yeah. It's also over unity, more energy out than in. So let me just tell you the brief history of that really quick, because mm. a lot of people don't know about it. In 2001, it was a British guy who received an award from the British government for building this thing. And they gave him this money. They said, take your machine over to America and present it to them. That was in 2001. But in 2002, he started having heating problems. The thing was overheating. And then in 2006, he designed a, a water cooling system for it to try to keep it cool. And then finally, as soon as he did that, the New Scientist magazine published an article called The Impossible, the EM Drive, where the Scientist magazine was like, wow, this guy has created a, an amazing kind of a EM drive, which is defying the laws of physics, you know, more energy out than in. And then in 2008, China bought into it. They said, oh, we want to invest in that. <laughs> and then in 2009, this British guy was allowed to demonstrate his machine to Boeing in America. You know, Boeing, the major company. They said, okay, bring us your machine. So he brought them their machine. And then in 2012, Boeing made the official announcement that, yes, we have bought into this technology. We're researching it. In 2012, Boeing admitted that. In 2014, some NASA scientists tried to write a quantum mechanical theory of how this machine is working. 2014, NASA admitted that this is worth looking into. But as soon as NASA did that in 2015, then they started poo-pooing on it. So no, 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 you can't get more energy out than in. So this is tied into why did the Stephen Hawkins have to change his Hawkins radiation? Because they had to poo-poo on that. Wait a minute. Don't tell the public the tokamak is real. Don't tell the public this EM drive is real. Don't tell the public about Hawkins radiation. So around this time, they had to start poo-pooing on all these over-unity devices. Even though the scientific magazine started poo-pooing on it in 2015, in 2016, NASA themselves admitted successful trials with this EM drive. Can I just point out, this reminds me very much of the cold fusion cover-up in 1989. It was, um, the objection to it was purely theoretical. It seems it was like all, oh, we don't know how it works. But the thing is, as long as you get the results, you can use it. You don't, it doesn't necessarily matter if you can't create a theoretical model to explain its function. As long as the function works, you can use it for practical purposes. Otherwise, if we if you right. waited forever, we'd be waiting forever because there's still mysteries associated with electricity, and uh, so, yeah. so we don't stop us using electricity all the time. Let's come back to the last little subject here. I want to finish telling some of my own personal stories here because, you know, I've been doing free energy research ever since 1999. I mentioned that. At my university, in Portland State University, is the university where they officially suppressed the cold fusion yes. experiments because I met the people and I asked them, what happened to those cold fusion experiments? And they said they denied us access to the materials we needed to continue doing those experiments. So I heard about that in 1999, that they've been suppressing free energy. I dedicated my life to that, you know, how can we bring this free energy? There's a free energy community 
We used to have a web page called the PES Wiki, but that web page was taken down. And now you have overunity.com, which some people still use. That whole thing kind of died out. There's some groups who are still doing it today in America, and uh, they've had some successes. But I, I'm not going to mention that now. I want to talk about the suppression of free energy because I have firsthand experience with this. The first thing is the most popular name, which everybody knows, is Stanley Myers, right? Now, there's a version of this story which the people don't know. And it's really important I tell this story because I have a friend who used to be very good friends with Stanley May Myers. Now, what happened was in the 1980s, Stanley Myers was working with a team of scientists who were building a magnetic motor which was able to get more energy out than in. It was a pulse motor. They were sending pulses into the magnets and they were pulling energy out of the magnets and the amount of energy they were getting out was greater than the amount of energy putting in. Now this took place in the 80s and then what happened was as soon as they did that the US Army came in and said this machine belongs to us now and we don't want you guys to talk about what you have done here. Now Stanley Myers and one of my good friends was part of that team who built that magnetic motor in the 80s. Now what happened was Stanley Myers was basically under contract not to talk about over unity and he broke that contract once he released his hydrogen car. That's why he was poisoned, you know. Now there's a little bit more to this story is I might have mentioned this last time but I have another friend who's a Hong Kong scientist he wrote a mathematical paper about the theory of momentum of electromagnetic devices and how you can utilize the momentum of the spinning wheel to get more energy out than in. He wrote a mathematical paper about this back in the 90s and then the US Army read his paper and they said your paper describes this machine that we have here. So he was invited to America and he was given access and he saw the machine which my friend had built in the 80s. You know, he actually made a video of it. I mean, so, you've got some on your YouTube channel You've got because you've got some demonstrations on your YouTube channel of this. I think. Yeah, mm. that was a later prototype that he had personally built later in the 2000s. I met him I think it was 2009 where he made a successful prototype. I made a video of that back then. So that was the same guy. So all these kind of stories, it's a small world, all these stories tie in, you know? Yeah. Anyway, let me tell you some other of my own personal stories here because people never heard these stories before. The second story is the Magna Coaster. This was a suppressed energy. So what happened was there was a Canadian guy and he had done a similar thing where he had created a, a motor where he was sending pulses and he was able to get more energy out. And then my friend went to him and said, you know, you don't even need a spinning motor to do that. You can just use a permanent magnet and an electromagnet and get the same results. You can do it in a solid state object with no movement at all. So my friend was guiding him and he actually did it. He actually created a successful prototype. And then he came onto this television show in Canada called the Dragon's Den. Okay. And the it, Dragon's Den was a television show where inventors would present their inventions to certain oh, yeah. millionaires. We got a version of that over here, yeah. And I didn't realize Canada had one too. Right. So this guy presented his box. It was just a box that was charging batteries. 
energy would come out of the batteries into the magnets and come back into the battery. And then he had an inverter, it could light up some lights, and it was working 24 7. He had done it solid state. He was the first one to do it solid state without a spinning wheel. So I became friends with him. He made some business mistakes, though. You see, what happened was he came onto this Dragon's Den show, and this millionaire guy said, OK, I'm going to invest in your technology. And he gave him a bunch of money. But then he gave some stipulations. You know, there was some red tape along with the money. You have to do it this way. You have to work together with the Canadian power company, blah, blah, blah. He had put all these uh, stipulations with the money. And you also have to sign over the patent to the Canadian army. And then oh, finally, man. the guy was like, no, I'm not going to sign over my patent. And so then he got cut off from all that money. So then he's like, OK, I have no more money. What am I going to do? So then he made the big mistake. He says, I'm going to start taking pre-orders. Everybody, you can buy your machine now. And then when the machine's ready, I'm going to deliver it to you later. So that was his mistake. He started taking a lot of money from people. He actually delivered one machine to one company in Spain. He had given them like an instruction manual. Like this is step one, step two, step three. He sent it in the mail to Spain. And that Spanish company like didn't follow the instructions and the machine blew up. That's just what they debunked then, once, you know. This was around 2009. He made some other mistakes. What was happening was that he was blowing up the batteries. The batteries were dying. So he said the solution to this problem is to replace the batteries with the capacitors. The capacitors can handle that. But he ran out of money, couldn't do that anymore. And a lot of people got mad at him because they had given him money. I had also given him money. You know, I was on his waiting list. He was supposed to deliver a device to me, but he ran out of money. He had to go back to the drawing board to get the capacitors instead of batteries. And he just ran out of money. And so that's what happened to him. But that story didn't end there because what happened i eventually got my hands on one of his early prototypes because i knew his mentor so i got the, my hands on one of his early prototypes i brought it to china and i started reverse engineering it i have a video on my channel which is called who killed the magna coaster where i'm showing the process of me reverse engineering this thing but the problem was there was two magic numbers. There's two frequencies. There's the input frequency and the output frequency. And I never knew those magic numbers. And I also eventually ran out of funding to do that. It would have taken me a long, long, long time to try to find those magic numbers. Eventually, I might do that someday. But, you know, I just don't have the money right now to continue that research. You know, I'm, I'm shocked that I don't know the Canadian version of the, uh, the Dragon's Den. I mean, they always had def various people on it. I know the original one had Donald Trump um, in, in the United States. Um, we had Alan Sugar over here and a couple of other people. But I didn't realize that someone who was supposedly in that situation would actually be in contact some way with the government and that they would start trying to rein it in with various conditions. I mean, um, they do, though. I mean, John Hutchison, talk, he was a Canadian as well. Um, he uh, <laughs> mentions this as well, this process. Okay, so that's the end of my Magna Coaster story. Let me tell you another interesting story, which a lot of people don't know. It's called the Z-Power. So I met the people from Z-Power, and he told me his story. What happened was he had built this little thing which could light up a light bulb a long time ago, like back in the 80s. Let me tell the full story. What happened was, originally, he was working on the cancer cure. He was working on the Raymond Reif machine. And he built a Raymond Reif machine, and he started trying to cure cancer. But then he found that his Raymond Reif machine was putting out more energy than was coming in. So then he changed his thing. He says, I'm not going to focus on cancer cures anymore 
that's like a no-no subject. If I start telling people I can cure cancer, they're going to kill me. So he started focusing on over-unity machines. And he had made one back in the 80s. It was a solid state. There was no moving parts. And he could light up a light bulb. And then eventually he moved to the Philippines. And he was getting money from the Philippine government. And he developed an entire power station. He was the world's first person to make a free energy power station. Now, his <coughs> technology is the Nikola Tesla technology. The theory behind the Wardenclyffe Tower is that you can not only transmit wireless energy, but you can also pull in energy from the magnetosphere of the Earth. Yeah. He was the first guy to actually do it. So he built a power station in the Philippines. And then I asked him, what happened to that? He said there was some kind of a military coup where they kicked out the president. I don't know which president, because basically almost every president of the Philippines has been kicked out due to a military coup. And then he took his power station and he hid it inside of some shipping containers. He has this working power station, which is hidden inside of some shipping containers in the Philippines. And then he went back to America. And that's when I met him. And yeah. he says, you know, I'm trying to get funding and I have the power station hidden. It couldn't be improved. And I started giving him some advice on how to improve his power station. He just dismantled it and put it into shipping containers. He dismantled right. all the equipment. Is it still in the Philippines now, these, these shipping containers? Yeah, I think so, because it's been several years since I talked to him. And I could go into a lot of detail, but the important thing here is how does this thing work? This is this thing, because I knew him quite well, because I was giving him advice on how to improve his power station. The Z, Z something. Z power. Z is power. That is that Z as in Z double E? There's a letter Z. Z. The letter Z. Yeah, the oh, letter Z. Yeah, oh, that's we, we just call it Z in in England, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Z power. Z power. Right. Yeah. The thing is, if you go to overunity.com, there's all these people making theories. How did that machine work? I'm actually the best one to know because I spoke to him quite in detail about it. So the way it works is that he has some metal plates. And he is resonating this plates. And at first he was using the Schumann frequencies. He was resonating these plates with the Schumann frequencies. He started noticing he could get more energy out than in. And then he started looking at the output, the frequencies he was getting out. And he says he found that if I just give a double, triple, he started hitting it with extra frequencies. So he has not just one frequency coming into this plate. He could use his oscilloscope to find out what other frequencies this machine was asking for and give those machine those frequencies and then the output would increase more. And then he found the third set of frequencies. So he gave it those frequencies. So the machine was telling him what to do. It was like, give me this, and then I'll give you more. Give me this, I'll give you more. So that's the process of how he built it. This is what Tesla's dream was, was just to pull energy from the Earth's magnetosphere. And the machine will tell you what is the natural frequencies in order to increase the output. So this is the story of the Z power. I hope a lot of people will hear this story. I have a friend who's a NASA employee who works in the free energy department. Basically, NASA sends him out, go find some free energy devices and bring them back to NASA Earth. has a free energy department. They do, yes. They do. Oh. And, that, and my friend is working in that. I never talked to this guy about the moon landing hoax, but I did talk to him about the suppression of free energy. And I asked him, I said, don't you think NASA is going to be taking part in the suppression of this? And he says, yeah, it, it's, you know, there is a lot of money involved. But anyway, that's my job. My job is to go out and bring them these machines. He had told me right now, this was like last year, he told me right now we're testing the whole comb device. And in our last interview, 
I told you to search YouTube for Hulk Home, and then yeah. you said, all I'm finding now is the people poo-pooing on it. Yeah, you I know? found a, a, um, a satire video, yeah. You see, you had found about it, it, then right as soon as you told me, I wrote a letter to my NASA friend. I said, what happened to the Hulk Home device? And he told me, yeah, NASA poo-pooed on it. They found it's not working, and they're going to maybe even sue the guy or something for fraud or something. Oh, and it's like, that <laughs> probably means it was actually working. Thank <laughs> you.